this week on Guardians of Fall. Last time, you adventurers had a choice in front of you. Before you, at a pool, you saw two small kenkus about to be attacked by a group of vicious looking dogmen. With a chance to act before those in front of you, you decided to help the children and entangle the dog people and then engage them in combat. After the fight was over, you realized there was something different about these Kenku. For unlike Song, who could not speak, these ones had the ability to, without mimicking you. After some conversation was had, it turned out that these Kenku children were from a village of other Kenku guarded by a mysterious person named the Ansei, who gave them the ability to speak. With even more conversation, it was revealed that this Ansei is actually the Nightingale that Hans and Franz have been looking for on their own quest. After being escorted back to the village by the children and then meeting some rangers on the way, you were taken to the Nightingale, who met with you, invited you to stay with her for the night, and gave you dinner. During the festivities, she tasked Hans and Franz with his next mission, which was to make the stories of the Bendaya well known again throughout the lands. The rest of you spent the evening sharing stories with her and drinking and having a little fun with some of the berries you collected from the satyr's tree. Towards the end of the night, some of the rangers came forward and said that they suspected that the guild members had been attacked by some creatures known as harpies. Very dangerous with the ability to lure you towards them. Concerned about the upcoming battle, Una asked the Anse if she would have any way to help you, and she said she could give you a gift to help resist their charms in the morning. And with that, you rested for the night, and now you awaken in the morning in the Nightingale's village of Kenku. <laughs> Wait, the village is called Kenku? The village of, of Kenku. Like, Composed it's a village of Kenku. Of Kenku. Oh. Um, actually, the village has a name. It is called uh, the Akitori Village. Akitori Village. Oh, fancy. Which means Redbird Village in Japanese. And if I pronounce that wrong to any Japanese listeners, I'm very sorry. <laughs> if we have Japanese listeners, way to go us. It's one of those weird English things where it's actually like Redbird Village Village. <laughs> yep. <laughs> so... You guys awake, uh, you had a restful night's sleep. It was very soothing. The nightingale actually sang you a little lullaby to rock you all off to sleep. And it was sing it for us? <gasps> Only if you want to be disappointed, because yes. anything you imagine is going to be better. I don't want to be disappointed. I, I do. Carry on. It was actually rockabye. Mm-hmm. You know, like the rock song. Rockabye! I'm no. so confused. From like the 90s? Uh-uh. Oh, okay. <laughs> well, I was born then. That went over their heads. Um, no, basically the night passes and eventually you guys wake around dawn because that's when people get up right in this world. What? <laughs> usually, usually. I don't know, you can sleep in it if you want, but... Sleep for days. Yeah, you can actually smell that um, there is breakfast being made as well. Hear the sound of like eggs being cooked and smell it. Wait, Something. they eat eggs? <laughs> well, that's actually a good point. <laughs> How are they born? They probably yeah. lay eggs. They're not kenku eggs. <laughs> Why we, would you eat an egg? Know. We it looks like a baby. Yeah. yeah. We eat flesh of animals. We, we, we eat other mammals. Yeah, yeah. So they probably. Yeah, let's just say that they're. We eat a lot of mammals. pigs. Are yeah. genetically very close to humans. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Anyway, so they're making breakfast. Um, you can smell them cooking eggs, and there's a little bit of a, um, rice doesn't really have a smell, but you can hear boiling water in the distance as well. It kind of has a starchy smell. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it does have a starchy smell. Um, so no, you, you wake up, you guys were in a little room of your own with these, um, flat futons. futons. Yes. I know, I'm trying to work on my descriptions. Well, I know, I'm, I'm, They're I'm made out of the... I said, we're gonna sleep on this. Yeah, I know, the futons. <laughs> Come across my futon. <laughs> yeah. They're actually little um, flat beds that are made out of this bamboo-like material. The closest thing that you guys would have 
equate it to would be reeds that you're familiar with. Like it's very similar. reed mat. Yes, and then there is like a blanket <laughs> over top of it, and it looks like it is stuffed with some sort of plant material to make it soft. Not down, buddy. Not down. <laughs> they don't just. All right, my undercoat goes in here. I mean, they could do that. I mean, they literally, should. Literally making your shove own it bed. In. Yep. Yeah, that's because you know we we shave our our, our cut our hair mm-hmm. and we just put that in a bag and make. Yep. Ooh. Oh, that's not normal. Yeah. That's, that's wait, what you're yeah, supposed to do. do. Yeah. You don't make your bed out of your dead skin. I should. Do this. And hair? What? <laughs> That's what our bed's stuffed with. Just kick that pumice stone and <laughs> fill a bag. <laughs> so gross. Yep. Wait. Okay, let's continue. <laughs> so yeah, no, you guys wake up in the morning. Is there anything uh, you wish to do? Get the um, blessing. Yeah. Um, I mean, Hans and Franz would probably be very interested in in you know um visiting with the the nightingale mm-hmm. um and uh, you know probably i don't know kind of uh recounting where where they've been and and stuff like that you know now that the festivities mm-hmm. and and the you know, the attention is, is kind of off his brother. He wants to, you know, oh, sure. take this opportunity as this is one of his totems to, you know, go and, and, and converse, take this opportunity, you know, have kind of a personal conversation sure. if possible. You get up out of the room and you go through the door. It actually is very strange because it slides. And right. It's like these thin panels, but you saw how they were operated last night. So you slide it open, slide it closed, and you walk down the outer hallway and you go to where the food is noises are being made and the smells and there is a couple kangoos in there preparing food um and they say good morning good morning would you like breakfast um yes but i was wondering if you know where the nightingale is um another one of them speaks up Oh, she's out uh, back in her garden. Uh, you, she said if anyone wanted to look for her, you could go see her out there. So. Okay, thank you. All right. And is there anything like food related that I can just grab? Actually. Yeah, there's a kangaroo. Rice right ball. <laughs> Rice ball. Um, give me a perception check. Some onigiri. Yeah, I'm hoping for some. Natural twenty. Yes. You see that um, they're actively cooking um, no, eggs and they have rice that they're cooking, but then there are these little rice balls that you saw being eaten last night, and you can take one of those and okay. walk. And then you Thank you. leave them out in the walkway, and when the guards come around, before they eat it, you kill them stealthily, and then you take the rice ball back. Wow. <laughs> It's like some m- m- Metal Gear Solid no, it's stuff. Yeah. Oh, really? Yeah. Apparently, guards, they will be like on high alert one second, and then as soon as you're good and hidden, they're like, that oh, must have hurt something. Ooh, a rice ball. I mean, to be fair, that's how I would be as a guard. Yeah. But, um, What's that? They have, a, they have a rig of 10 yards. Do you bite into it? the rice ball right away? Huh? Do you bite into the rice ball right away? Yeah, I'll, I'll, yeah. You know, I'll walk and, and, mm-hmm. and go down the path and... It's got some sort of savory um, soy paste inside. It's reminiscent of um, like red bean, but it is not sweet like red bean is. It's more okay. of savory and has a slight vinegary taste to it. But it's it's hmm. pretty pleasant. Like whether your character likes that or not, it's it's nicely complemented with the rice. I mean, if he likes pickles, he's got to like some. Yeah, he probably would like it. Yeah. Vinegary. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Um, uh, this could probably use some pickles. <laughs> Lots of pickles. Go, go to my pickle jar. No, you don't have any more pickles anymore. Oh, oh yeah, we ate them. All no, of, uh, Nora's it's full of nuts and berries. And and... And... <laughs> He's like, I don't need this shit. Oh, oh. Throws it outside. Fuck <laughs> <laughs> that bitch. I'll probably, you know, I have to actually put some, uh, some, some, some pistachios or whatever okay. in there. Get, get it some crunch. <laughs> so as you're munching and walking, you manage to follow the hallway that just, it's essentially a square that goes around the building. And then walking, you see um, a porch that is partially enclosed with netting. And then there is another sliding door. And then 
Beyond that, you can see there is a garden out there in the back. And Do I see a gazebo? Um, high or low? <laughs> Even. So 50? Even. Oh, okay. <laughs> Even. All right. You do see a gazebo. <laughs> I, uh, I charge. <laughs> um, perfect. You see a bird bath, too. That's what I was really um, weird to say, that she was out back in the bird bath. And, 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 oh, I'm yeah, sorry, I'm and, sorry. And, and, am I able to, to spot the nightingale, like, flying um, around? You don't see her initially. There's a lot of flowers and a lot of um, little fountains, but all of a sudden you kind of hear a humming, and you're like, oh, yep. Third or fourth one. They go right down towards the So oh, many. It's just cold I'm outside today. Go low. Um, you don't see her. There's a lot of distraction just because it is a very beautiful garden. There's lots of different flowers back here, and there's also some fountains. And you don't see her initially, but then you hear a humming sound coming from the northwestern part of the garden, and you just start walking towards it. And um, then you spot her amongst some yellow flowers. Okay. Is, is is the nightingale actually a hummingbird? Is she a deceiver? No, no, no she's, she's humming. humming. Oh, oh, okay. <laughs> she's like, <laughs> yep, yep. Gotcha. You know the whole bean song she, and poetry. She she's is humming. a bird that does hum. Oh, but she is not a hummingbird. I yes. see. <laughs> technically, technically, technically. Um. Um. um good, good morning, nightingale. I'm trying to think what she'd call you. It's Dennis. <laughs> it's Dennis. <laughs> what? Excuse me? My name is Dennis. I don't know you're called Dennis. <laughs> you did not ask. Um, good morning, child of Angie. How are you? Oh, um, uh, I'm doing quite well. Your, the, the beds that you gave us are quite comfortable. Thank you. You're most welcome. I believe it is important to be hospitable to guests, and unfortunately, due to safety reasons, we do not get many here that are allowed to come in, so it is always nice to have new faces. Um, I, w I was wondering, you know, in spite of, uh, well, maybe not in spite of, but um, con considering the task that you gave to my brother, um, you know, we, we have been doing that pretty much the entire 13 years that we've been away um is is there anything more specific that the task needs i've been doing my task for 13 years i know but we've been telling the stories mm -hmm. of the bendaya for 13 years oh i see what you're saying i was i was confused sorry like you're saying like we've been doing it <laughs> hans and franz's task for 13 years is there something i can do <laughs> <laughs> i've just been twiddling my thumbs <laughs> Well, I know that you have shared stories. It is slightly on a grander scale. The problem is, is when you just share stories in passing, sometimes they are easily forgotten when it is just in a night of parties or in a tavern, which is nothing wrong with doing that. I wanted to give your brother something more challenging and not just going to a random person and saying, have you heard the stories of the Vendaya? It, it needs to be something that's more memorable, something that will help people actually understand why they're important. And hmm, I feel like you're a bit confused. Um, perhaps it is how I view stories. Stories are not just meant to be told. There's something that can unify people. They can also be something that divides people if they have different versions of the story and disagree on it. But stories can be something that unify us. Nope, still confused. Fuck a child like you, dude. <laughs> you can see her look at you a little bit, like very patiently and kind of smile. What oh, that's terrifying. Like the, like the third oh, grade yeah. teacher, like, <laughs> the bee okay. Just... It's like more of smiling with her eyes. Like, oh, I see. Yeah, um, we went over this, too. Yeah. Um, what are you confused about? Do you feel that he should have completed the task already because you've been sharing stories? 
You do not strike me as a lazy one. You're no, that, that's what I mean. I've been telling the stories for 13 years. You know, like what more are we supposed to do? Like, you know, go and become kings or lords or something and, and tell, tell the people that way, like make it a law? No. More of, you need to have it where more people can access them. If you just tell one person in a tavern, they might forget it or only pass it on to somebody in passing. You need to find a way to make it so more people can hear them and read them or oh, put them in a like sp- a book. You could do a book. Or even like... Um, there, were, there were some people that did tapestries. Um, that is certainly a Actually, that's, that's a good point. There was a tapestry about the horse. Um, how it came from the sea and, and created a whole lot of things. Is that true? I kind of see her like have a little bit of a mischievous look and she's like, that was long before my time, but I do know the horse was the first, but I was not there for it, so I cannot say for sure whether it happened or not. Uh, oh, but is that is that what you mean? Like, like something more permanent, more physical? Yes, or an event. Sometimes our Kenku will try to go out and tell stories, and I will admit it is much more ineffective when they are not appearing as Kenku. But have you, did you not remember in the days of the tribe? Sorry, Megan's face like caught me off guard. Do you remember in the days of the tribes? I don't know if you still do this. Hold up. Have you discovered something, Megan? Maybe. Maybe. Sorry, I just wrote uh-huh. down travel. Traveler con? Question yeah. mark? <laughs> <laughs> Pretty much. Yeah, traveler con. It's crossover. Oh, right? I already this, have plans. This, this oh, would just be Kenku Yeah, I like how he's Kenku Khan. Come in on your plan. And oh, was that you wrote down um, for the event? Yeah, <laughs> for the event. Kenku Traveler con? Question mark? Kenku Nice. Um, okay, in yeah, the days of the tribe. In the days of the tribe, there would be many storytellers who would try to make an impact and then do a contest to see who told the best story. It could be something like that, too. Something that's memorable. It could be a tapestry. It could be written down in a book. The Kenku do not have much need of books. Neither do I, because we remember everything, but not everyone has Jesus, a memory. Jesus, conceited much? <laughs> we don't write things down because we fucking remember everything. Yeah, I remember okay. everything. But yeah, the, the nightingale says that I cannot give you too many answers. Your brother does have to figure this out partially on his own. And I don't want to steer him one way or another. I am not Faith's domain. Although I do know what I think would be a good story. You said the end of well, August? Well, um, th- thank you. Thank you for the, the mm-hmm. ideas, at least. Um... I, um, we certainly appreciate you, you know, appearing to us. It's been, it's been a while since we've seen one of the other totems, one of your siblings. Um, and, um, it, you know, it's been a while since we've seen one of, you know, one of mine. Is there anything you else you wish to speak about? Um, have you ever known Angie to make a physical appearance in, in the world? Oh, well, yes, when I first met her. But that was a very long time ago. Before the goddesses were what they are now. As time passes, and they have changed, Angeet has become more of what she embodies. And now that she embodies pure inspiration, her form isn't really one you can interact with and touch. 
very much like you can't hold an idea. Um, huh? <laughs> and now, now, now she's calling me stupid. Can't hold an idea. She um, usually like physically hold. Yeah, you can't physically hold an idea. <laughs> I know what you mean. That you know, that's that's another question I had. How did the Tautums become the Tautums? Oh, Angeet, I must send one of the Kenku to the Vendai if you do not even know the stories of how we became the Tautums. We were all chosen individually by the goddesses for different reasons. Um. What, what, is, what is that? Sassy, man. She wasn't sassy. She was... Hopefully. She put you in your place. No, she didn't. <laughs> this is Megan as the Nightingale. She's like... Fool, you don't oh, know my story yes, and how right? I became me. Yeah, exactly. Okay. Um, were you always in your animal form or were you something before? I was always a nightingale. And they just woke you up? You can kind of see she looks a little bit like in disbelief. Like, I can't believe you don't know the story of how I became the Nightingale. Well, maybe this is time for DM to be like, you would know this stuff. Um, that is purely up to Josh. This is a story that is told in your village. Oh. Um, you would know different versions, like, you would know different versions of it, but you would know the story. The question is, is would your character at 12, when you last heard it from the village, would you remember the stories? Uh, because it wasn't it wasn't 12. your focus. That's my question. Like if right. your character was like it, like if it was Nora who is a bookworm, I would say a hundred percent you would know this. Unless Sam was like, I don't think Nora would care about this. But for you, yeah, I don't know if they were spreading the word too. Hmm? Yeah, you, you have been spreading the word as well. Well, well just, what stories you've been telling? Like well, I don't know what stories, stories I've been telling. That's more been how word blah. Well, yeah, that's the thing is, I don't know what kind of stories your character... You know. Would you tell stories about your guys' tribes in battle being heroic, or would Probably, you give stories about yeah. the well, totems? Yeah, I thought, well, for my dear, I've been throwing stories about the totems, because that's what... Right, well, yeah. you know, I guess what we would know by the age of 12, mm -hmm. I guess that's not something that I really, really thought about of... Well, there's also the question of, you know, what people say and what's actually the truth. You know, and Hans and Franz uh -huh. has an opportunity mm -hmm. to get, you know, mm -hmm. from the horse's mouth. From yeah, from the horse's mouth. <laughs> Do you right. wish for me to recite the story? Ah, uh, sure. <laughs> I'm sure our listeners would, would love, love to, to know. Read it. Okay, I will tell you the story. Would you like to hear it over breakfast, or would you rather just hear it right now between us? Um, maybe your brother could use. Yeah, no, know. over breakfast sounds. Sounds great. I only had one of those rice ball thingies. Oh, those are very delicious. Indeed. I remember the first time I had one. They were so amazing. What? <laughs> just like, but hesitation. <laughs> I just had one. They were really delicious. Yeah. Indeed. <laughs> <laughs> cool story, bro. Uh, hey, I had a burp. I was fighting it off. <laughs> the, okay, nightingale, uh, the nightingale will actually, like, flutter over and she'll land on your uh, shoulder and be like, oh, let's go into breakfast together. She touched me. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I imagine right now. Just the internal, internal fangirl. You know, just uh -huh. kind of like very, <laughs> almost kind of kind of stiff, like. Trying to keep level uh, so you're not like shaking her route kind of thing. Yeah. You know, so I'm not just like skipping <laughs> be, cool, just, just, be cool, man. Yeah, yeah, be cool, man. That's just internally. <laughs> just internally, yeah. like, um, uh, no. yeah. So he'll kind of, you know, walk back to the mess hall. Um, you know, very in internally, being very like over the moon, sort of, 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 you know, the the uh, I am uh, a, you know, the the totem is. Physically with me here, you know, it's, 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 you know, I mean, every, every other time it's been exciting, but like, the, Senpai nar noticed me. The, the narcoleptic serpent just slept on her rock and, and talked to us in, in broken speech. The horse I was basically waiting to get kicked by, um, but the nightingale's like, let's go to breakfast, flutter, flutter, land on shoulder. <laughs> oh, 
Oh, yeah. <laughs> she likes you guys. I'm likable. <laughs> um... No, she just kind of um, sits gracefully and just kind of continues humming on your shoulder as you guys walk in together. Um, it's actually a tune you recognize from back home. It was one that oh. your um, parents would sing when you were younger. Gotcha. It's just a little happy song. but We'll just hum along with her. As they were out talking before we go to breakfast, is there anything you guys were doing when you woke up in the morning? Nora would probably find some way to just kind of like clean up a little bit before mm-hmm. going down and getting some food okay. and looking over everything. Um, the king is like, um, there's a, there's a bird bath out back, but, um, Mm -hmm. we actually have a little washing area that you could use if you wanted. It's mostly for cleaning clothes, but, you know, we can let you have some privacy in there. Oh, thank you. (laughs) Nora just scurries back and washes up and then comes back to Mm -hmm. look over the food and try to find anything that doesn't have meat in it. Okay. Um, there's quite a bit of stuff. You can actually eat a lot of vegetables and then um, grains, so yeah, you can find stuff. Perfect. Luna and Rowan, are you doing anything in the morning? I don't see anything special. Okay. I'm going to try to play the song again since I botched it up so bad. Song, song. I'm going to try again since I you feel that big Give down me down there. a yep. performance oh, check with your proficiency at it because you've been practicing this. Yes, which is nice. Do I get a bonus with me because I'm using his flute too? That's why you get your proficiency bonus. How exciting. I forgot to maybe open up my dice bag. It's okay, Charlie. Oh, not terrible. Performance. I'm not proficient in it. So we have a 15. Is it edge or proficiency? That is plus two because it's a flute. No. No, but add your. Two is your dex. Because you practice this song. And then your proficiency. Which is another plus two. So because of my flute, I get proficiency. So it'd be 17. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. Then 17. 17. It sounds a lot better than it did last time. Good. I felt really horrible there for a moment. <laughs> um, the, you guys are just eating breakfast as Una plays her flute, and then you see um, Hans and Franz come in with the nightingale on his shoulder, and she's listening to the song from Song, and like kind of like you can tell she's like, I haven't heard this song before. And uh, oh, that just bre- boshed my song. song, 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 song. She's listening song, to the song, 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 song. song. <laughs> Let me hear that song. But that just totally broke my theory. If uh, she's never heard the song before, <laughs> 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 that was your theory. Yeah. That song was actually from this place. Oh, Originally, wait. like he was a hatch baby, and he got stolen away, you... brought to the dragon lady. The... Wait, the song that she's humming while on my shoulder mm-hmm. is the same song that Una's No, playing? no, no. Oh. She was humming a different one, and then when she heard Una's song, she stopped and started listening oh, to oh, it. Oh, 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 okay. Um, oh, she, that's what she was trying I, to get across yeah. last night. I've never heard that song before. It is very lovely. Did you write it yourself? Um, no. Our Kanku friend song actually wrote it, and he taught me how to play it. What a talented musician he is. I do hope that he comes and stays sometime. It'd be most welcoming to have another musician here. Next time I see him, I'll point him in your direction. Can you sit down and have some food? Uh, yeah, Hobbs and Franz will uh, sit down next to mm-hmm. uh, next to his brother, and after he gets a, a, cu- a plate of... What? What? Well, I've never said what I was doing yet. Oh, I guess Hans and Tron sits down next to Nora after getting a couple of uh, another plate of a couple of onigiri. Yeah. What is your character doing in the morning? He goes down and eats breakfast. <laughs> 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 well, yeah, he'd probably go because he'd probably be up before everybody else. Cause he's really, like, and, so and I just realized this whole time Ed Ritual says. cast alarm and I've never cast it. <laughs> oh, you all could have been murdered in the Nightingale's house. Wow. Good thing you won. Work. Like the Sander thing, like the, that would have been so helpful. Mm-hmm. Have a dummy. Um. <laughs> but yeah, no, so I'll get up, go do my exercises, and then come back in. You just don't want to sit by your brother, I see no. how it is. I want to sit next to my brother. I do actually want to um, take out Song's necklace and see if she recognizes what it is. Um, hmm. She 
seems like studying this uh, necklace very closely. I think I've seen these symbols before, but they're they're they look fayish. Um, I'm not. Uh, maybe it means. Means you're thinking like I don't want to sound dumb, but I don't want to say the wrong <laughs> thing. I think it means warding or guarding or something like that. I'm not as familiar with Fey symbols. I'm sure your friends here know. I was gonna say, isn't this the one? Didn't we know what the yep, symbols were? You meant? said what it was. Yeah. To him. Yeah. We already told Did you, you this. Yeah. Yeah. One's protection, and one was strength. Strength. Was right? yes. Yeah. Protection yeah. and strength is what they meant. We got your back. Did we get that? Yes. Yeah. yeah. You each okay. got one. Yeah, because it, 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 like, it was like a... Yeah, a but they were Yeah. Oh, yeah, they but were dragons. I don't remember being told that they were. Yeah, I showed you a picture yeah. of it, and I said that... You showed Nor- us a picture of it? Yeah. yeah. Yes, and Nora... Are you sure we were here for this? <laughs> I don't remember the picture. Oh, maybe it was the other Hans and Franz. Oh, yeah, it was that other Hans and Franz. Remember the picture? I definitely don't remember the strength. One that's way better than these two. I don't remember shit. How could you say that about me? Easily. <laughs> it's my non Nora coming out. <laughs> Easily. Sam. Hey, that was Megan. <laughs> True that. Ooh. Um no, uh it yeah, uh Nora and Rowan told you you know, to be fair, to be fair you yeah. probably forgot because it was right after you it was the morning after you almost died in the Spectre fight when you all got the gifts. You were a little distracted. So Maybe you just forgot. It basically means protection and strength, though. That is what Nora and Rowan told you, and you would know that, but... Okay. Um, yeah. Okay. Never mind. I mean, the the Nightingale still could have told you that. She, yeah, no, that's cool. Do you know what this means? Because I know what it means. <laughs> I was testing you, me. right? You're not the real Nightingale! <laughs> ah, um, no, but the Nightingale will let you all eat for a while and eat her herself. She'll eat some bird seeds. No, eat really herself? <laughs> Shit, what's happening? She's freezing, uh, Lizzie. <laughs> she'll eat some bird seed herself. She's hungry. Okay. <laughs> so if you're hungry, you can have a nibble. <laughs> <laughs> I'm quite tasty. <laughs> um, I want to ask her what other creatures what live first? in this valley. Oh, there's Besides the harpies and the dog people. And ask her more about the dog people, too. Because they kind of seem weird and cool. <laughs> all at the same time. Um, <laughs> Are they evil? She'll, she'll... Do we need to kill all of them? I can tor- turn myself into look like one. It's fine. Yes. Um, she'll say that the valley has always been home to many different sorts of creatures. Um usual predators that you find um there are those unusual ones the harpies are actually not local to here they normally favor the coast and um i've no they don't normally haunt this valley i'm not sure why are they spirits <laughs> no not that i'm aware hunt, of hunt not haunt she said haunt yeah i would haunt too <laughs> it was hunt i swear um there the gnolls are very Sad creatures. They have the potential to learn and and grow and become more than what they currently are, but they prefer to stay um, savage and feral. And has anybody tried to teach them? Birds of the bees. Yeah, brother. I was really just gonna, I was gonna, like, just gonna like run pell mell, just like, <laughs> like get wrapped up in it. Um, there's occasionally have been some undead in the past that have arrived, but that is very rare. And so, do you do you ride the giant spiders that are around here too? Oh no, that's very dangerous. It's a bit you stupid, would have to be, imagine. I You'd have to be very brave or very, very um, confident to try to ride a spider. We should do it. As you guys are sitting and eating, um, after a little bit of time, the nightingale um, like has a bit of a drink and then um, turns to you all and says, um, 
Hans and Franz requested that I share a story with you all, and it was one he wanted to hear the, the true version of. Mm -hmm. Are you all right with me sharing it with you? Of course. Yes, please. Very well. No, these heathens don't deserve it. Whoa! <laughs> Get out of my house! <laughs> I'm gonna burn the food down you slush on. <laughs> And you will never complete your task. <laughs> um, your vocal cords just turn black. No, I don't know. Oh, God. Um, wow. I will tell you the story of how I became one of Angie's totems. But first, I must tell you another story. It is the story of the original people of Hohal. In the days of old, the clans of Fahal would roam the wilds, each tribe cho choosing a certain aspect of their goddess to follow. It came to them then when Moru favored the earth and brought forth all sorts of wonderful plants. Many of the rulers were tired of roaming and said, let us build our homes here and wander no more. Thus several of the tribes and clans settled their lands and tents and traded them for stone and domesticated animals and reaped the plants that they harvested. Many of these tribes were not comfortable living in houses of stone, so they continued wandering, saying, we belong under the stars as our gods would roam when they first came forth, and so should we. And so it became known that the tribes of Pahal warred with each other, for those who roamed and did not respect the walls put up by their former chiefs had styled themselves as kings and queens the wanderers were known as the Fani, and those who built their stone walls and homes and straw were known as the Togali. Now I must tell you how the wolf got its, its role for the goddess Forian, who represents war. It came that the tribes were living in relative peace, and Angid was incredibly pleased with those, for the Tungali excelled at crafting new items and trading those with others around the tribes, and even the ones in the lands to the south. This displeased Forian, who felt sidelined for her champion and wondered why she had no more warriors to bless her butterflies. Angid frowned at her sister and thought her careless. Only the strongest should be left alive. Your tools make our people fat and weak, said Forian, and she began to plot. The wolf then suggested a cunning plan and convinced her of how to set the tribes who roamed and those who stayed in stone walls against each other. And for that, he became known as the guardian of wolf and her advisor and the most cunning out of all the totems. Because of Florian whispering in the craftsmen's ears, they made beautiful and deadly weapons. And then the children of Fahal fought each other. And, Mor and Forian had all the corpses for her butterflies that she wanted. This is how I became the Nightingale. Angie was devastated that her own craftsmen had made weapons that turned into something that would kill others. And so she went and fled, hiding deep underground in sorrow. Her sister Moru was furious that the people of Fahal were killing each other, and she beseeched them to stop, but they would not listen. Even more grave insults, many claimed they were fighting for her and claiming that their portion of the lands belonged to theirs and not others. Nor knowing it was all Florian's fault, but needing her sister back, Moru sought out Commandel, the god of wild things and entryways, who helped her find Angie deep underground. She pleaded with her sister, but Angid was so sad she refused to emerge saying there was no more beauty left in the world after all the death. Moru and Kanladel decided not to rely on humans and instead called forth all the animals to show their beauty to Angid and inspire her to return above. Peacocks strutted their feathers, swans preened their white feathers, hummingbirds flashed their bright colors, but Angid would not return, finding their attempts shallow. After exhausting all other options, a nightingale flew before the two gods and asked if they might speak to Angie. And you can see the smile in her eyes again, <laughs> um, knowing that she's talking about when she came into the story. The other beautiful birds scoffed, 
But the nightingale, the, because the nightingale was rather plain and unremarkable, Moru, however, granted it a chance to speak to Angid. And then the nightingale began to sing the most beautiful song to Angid. To those who had heard it said, they had never heard anything so lovely. Now no one knows exactly what she sang to the goddess. The tune is lost to time. But soon Angid stepped forth onto the surface again, wiping tears. She extended her hand and the humble nightingale flew forward and rested there. Thank you for your song. You have reminded me that there is beauty still in this world. She kissed the bird's head and the dingy orange, the orange feathers began to glow the same brilliant color as the goddess's own red gold hair. You will forever sing and remind the people of what is precious and beautiful in this world. And it is for that song that the nightingale has become the honored symbol of the goddess of Angid. And then she breaks her story. <laughs> So if the song was lost, but you're the one who sang it, can you teach us how to sing it? Give me I a persuasion be, check. Then I want to be lost in time. This is going to suck. The the lost? Well, she said the song was lost for, in time, but if she's the one who sang it, she should know it. And this is going to suck. 17. <laughs> um, she smiles and... um. You are a bold one. Bold and brave enough, I'd wager to try riding a spider if you chose to. <clears throat> but I'm also afraid that one of the reasons it is lost is because I have not sung it since then, nor will sing it again, until Angib needs me to remind her of the beauty in the world once again. But that is the song, and that is how I became Angib's totem. That is a wonderful story. It is also slightly sad. What part of it did you find sad? Specifically the part where the sisters couldn't get along. Hey old travelers and well met. Thank you for listening to our podcast. This is a totally new experience for all of us and we're glad that you're here with us. Our story lives in many places but all of them lead back to Patreon. Full episodes of our podcast are released every two weeks on our Patreon for subscribers only, and half episodes of our sessions are available weekly on YouTube and wherever you find podcasts starting the following week. So, if you hate waiting, subscribe to us on Patreon for early access. If you like the show, consider sharing it on Twitter using hashtag TheWesterverse. You can also follow us all over other social media accounts named TheWesterverse for updates and other RPG-related content. That about wraps it up for our shameless plugs. Now, onward, adventurers! It is sometimes the way of the world that things that are family will quarrel with each other. It is indeed sad. Unfortunately, in many cases, um, to represent all the aspects that they do, it brings them into conflict. Borean benefits from people fighting and death, but then um, Angid is sad, for all the poetry is sad, and the healing cannot stop all of the wounds that are caused from battle, and the earth will bleed, and the children will die, and many will become without families. It is very sad, but it is sometimes the way of the world. I suppose that makes sense. Um, but there is your story, Hans and Franz. Now you know. Thank you, Nightingale. Now, I believe you all were going to go search for the harpies and take care of them. And I had gifts to give you. Gifts? Gifts? A blessing. Yes, a blessing. So that the harpies could not charm us. No, no just to make it harder. harder for them to charm us. Yes. But yeah, see? Harder. Resistance and assistance are very different. Yes. 
So I'm resistant to the systems. It's basically the um, same. Okay. <laughs> no, it's not. Resistant to the immunity. Okay. Yes. Um. Basically, um, the nightingale then starts uh, singing again, and very similar to when she started singing the first time. You kind of start zoning out what she's saying because the melody is just so beautiful and very at peace that you just let it consume you and you feel this strange sense of, um, it almost feels like wings, like caressing the back of your neck and then um, stroking up the side of your head. And, um... Jesus. <laughs> sounds terrifying. <laughs> She's yeah. filling us up with her wings. It's yes. fine. Let it um, happen. And you feel it sort of like these soft wings wrapping around your mind where it's protecting and comfy. Like, I'm guarded a little bit from things. Um, um, except for you. Yours, it doesn't quite um, stick as much. Like, you can feel it start, and then it just doesn't quite wrap around your mind, Nora. Um, Instead, it because she's immune to wraps charms your mouth. and par- compulsion. Yeah. She's not immune, to... but yeah, Nora no. already has it because of her half elf ancestry. So, well, I'm happy mm-hmm. I get it. <laughs> I appreciate mm-hmm. that nonetheless. <laughs> she looks a little surprised. That did not seem to work on all of you, but maybe the there's something perhaps in your own ancestry that gives you some sort of protection against compulsions like this. Well, thank you for your blessing. I'm sure it'll come into great assistance. Um, you can see that it took kind of a bit out of her to do that. Like, she looks a little tired (laughs) from doing that. Mm. Um, and motions to one of the kenku. Brew me some tea, please. I need some caffeine. <laughs> a drip of water. <laughs> she needs her coffee, it's fine. Yeah. Um, um the shell. Where <laughs> are have the harpies been seen? Um yeah. one of uh, one of my um Kaji will show you the way out of the village and point you towards where they have been suspected to be resting. I'm afraid from there you will have to track them on your own. They can fly very far, so it is hard to say exactly where their nest is. But I wish you luck. Okay, let's head on out. Do you, you said we don't know anything about harpies, like just innately, like do you... um, wanna give me a um intelligence check or a nature check with um. You guys don't, but Una should because Would it's I a monstrosity. Possibly know something? You could give me one too with your sister. Ah, nature's a seven. Um, you roll with advantage. Because it's your favorite enemy. Nature's an eleven. <laughs> Fourteen. Okay, you're thinking about it, Una, and you're like, I should have known it was harpies. Like, harpies are very common around the isles, and they're very common for, sa- like, attacking sailors. Um, you feel kind of dumb, you're like, why can't I remember more? Like, and now it's like a, oh shit, I can't remember more. Like, crap, crap, crap. Um, I blame the wings. Wrapping around her brain. <laughs> Nora, um, you can kind of remember reading things in the books about harpies. You know that they are not the most intelligent, but they tend to try to strike at prey that they have an advantage on and that they hunt at night. That's mostly what you remember about them. And that they can fly um, so they can cover a lot more ground. But yeah, that's what you two can kind of remember. Um, no, but basically she will just either chat with you guys or we can kind of like skip it along if you want to actually get on the road and start yeah, looking for the harpies. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. Cause yeah. it's probably like, it's still early morning cause you guys woke up around like dawn and then Sunfets. you ate breakfast and stuff. So it's probably like eight. seven or eight right now. So you got quite a bit of light left, but basically you all got your protection. Um, and you're starting to travel outside of the village. Unlike the way you came in with Iki and May, you go out, um, the front gates. Not when you came in, you came in from the southwest. We came from the southeast. Southeast. Right, because yes. we were here in the valley and we went up this way to the village. So we went northwest. We came in from the southeast. On my map, you went in from like about like. You we we in, did a loop. You north. Way. You came in from the north. Yeah, you came in from the north. There's no 
Yeah, the northeast. You're right. It is the it's the northeast. You, you mean southeast? Towards. Southeast. We went up because we didn't go past the village and come back. Did, no, did we go no, up. You went. You we went down? actually more like over. Okay. To the east. Right. On the map, roughly. So maybe up a tiny bit north. But this time you're going north out of the village. Okay. So you go out. So we went this way. Yeah. And now we're going that a way. A similar. I will post a map for the viewers. <laughs> um, yeah, I could probably use it too. Because I thought I thought we went west to get to the village, not east. No, you went east. I thought the knolls were on the west side. No, the, east the, side. the north, the knolls are on the west side. So we went east. West side. So we went <laughs> southwest. Yes. So yes, we did go Shut southwest. Yes. If, so, seriously, Dennis. If King yes. were on the east, knolls are on the west, then we did come in from the southwest. Right. And you guys were kind of in the middle, a little bit closer to where the Kenku mm. were, but because the knolls were kind of over, not in their forest area per se, but in the closer by to their village. Okay. Um, so. Anyway, you go out through the north, and one of the the ranger who was uh, Taji, who she was yelling at yesterday to learn more information, is the one who escorts you out. Um, and basically, you start seeing that the bamboo fades after a, like a couple miles, and you get back to the elm trees. And then he gives you some directions towards some more mountains that you can see a little bit off in the distance, and says, "We think that they're from." probably based out of there. Um, normally the feathers we find are anywhere scattered from a few miles around there and the carcasses of what's left. So I would guess that there's some were probably over in that mountain area because it's much more safe than just resting on the forage ground and they can fly. So be careful. There should be some fresh water and game on your way, but just be very careful. Those things are very dangerous and they can lure you in from far away. Is uh. Go ahead. Oh, you're right. You had your hand up for us when talking. No, go ahead. <laughs> Is there anything in particular these hobbies eat? Um, mostly right. from what we have seen, just anything, any live prey that they can get their hands on. I mean, we think they're alive. It's kind of hard to tell with the, what's left behind if they were alive beforehand or not, but. but or if they just. We'll eat whatever's on the or ground. Or if they're like carrion. Yeah, yeah, if they're carrion or not. You understand what I'm saying. You're a smart <laughs> person. <laughs> Has Una seen harpies before? Like, could she use disguise self to make her look like I an know. injured I one? Um, <laughs> no, and okay. no, you haven't seen yeah. one up close. That's why she thinks yeah. bird people have boobs. <laughs> but you know I stories. Mean, okay. They are very common around the coasters, especially yeah. in like the sea caves and out, um, like in those little cluster islands. Mm -hmm. Um, but yeah, if you guys don't have any questions for him, other than just him giving you yeah, directions. Sorry, is there anything that we need to worry about besides harpies? Giant spiders. I mean, yes, giant, she's right, giant spiders, um, more we gnoll people. Um, like gnolls on the other side of the valley. They sometimes do fine. wander to go hunting. Um, you probably won't go far enough north to run into some ogres or anything, and there hasn't been a dead scene for a while. So. Ogres? Those are much more farther up north in the in the mountain range, like a, a day or two from here. They don't usually wander down this far south. I hope not. Why not, brother? The giant kin. Yeah, we've we've, we've outsmarted <laughs> giants, but the ogres are like bigger, so ogres they should be easy smaller. to outsmart. Okay. Aren't ogres smaller than giants? <laughs> Depends what kind of giant. If we do see a spider, can, can we try to tame it? I, I kind of want to ride one. No! No! <laughs> what? what is this timing? Why, why would you try to take a wild animal and bring it under your control? I mean, it's like taming like dolphins and that kind of stuff. Is that like a, a fish? What? Yeah, it, it's kind of like a big fish. Do you do you tame a trout? Why can't you? Why would you? The Why good not? eating. I, I don't fair, think brother, that... we do. We do husband. We do have animal husbandry in our village. Look, the sheep are not like wild animals, okay? We probably were one time. Yeah, and they got eaten. They were the prey. Well, maybe we're that's what she saying. She wants to eat the spiders. Oh, I mean, spider legs are pretty good. good. I mean, they can be. Spider, spider legs. legs. Roasted spider legs. 
I had them once. But those were like the little spiders, not these giant things. No, it was a big one. <laughs> when did we have a giant spider leg? In the village, you know. Oh, wait, that was a giant spider leg? I thought, okay. We giant, giant? I mean, you would Hans it's and Franz, I don't think that's what she's meaning. She doesn't want to eat it. She, she wants it like a pet. But yeah, honestly, that, that, Una, that's a terrible idea. I don't think that the spiders are going to want to start a, you know, a, a, a partnership or a friendship with you. That's probably not really their goal, really. And if you do, I know there are some species of spiders that when they do find a mate, they lay the eggs in the other one and kill it. Yep. So you don't do you want to be friends with that? <laughs> no, but a, a spider silk rope stone is really handy. And if you take yeah, the spider, can kill them. you can... But you can't get the stuff once they're dead. Yeah, I did already. Got a bunch of it. I think she's singing an endless supply. <laughs> so That's just greedy. <laughs> so right. But if he's there, you can use it for walking and like ride it around. Why are you so lazy once you get feet? <laughs> yeah, but sometimes we could be carrying inj- injured party members and. Don't you have your disc? Well, yeah, but. Oh, you know us? Yeah, but what if Rowan? you're a town? And that means I have to that lift you onto the no, disc. And that just seems like a lot of work. If I'm work. injured, he'll carry me. What if you're both inju- injured? What if Rowan's injured? What if it's then just Nora dead. and I? Yeah, <laughs> then you might as well leave us behind and save yourselves. This is a terrifying <laughs> conversation. <laughs> <laughs> Can we move on? <laughs> I think that is a good idea. <laughs> I think it's good to talk job. about strategy. I mean, for, in real life, if, if Rowan and my, me and my, my brother and I all go down, you guys should probably run. I'm just saying. Why? Yeah, I mean, unless, Are you saying we're not as good as you? Unless I'm Nora saying can turn if into three a, out of any of us five. If Noah can turn into a bear, she could carry us easily. Only one. Do you see how big Rowan is? Have you seen how big her bear is? He's like... <laughs> Huge! <laughs> Nora, Nora just shrinks down even more than she already is. Like, stop staring at me. Stop talking about me. Let's move on. She's very strong. But she wants to be. Rawr. <laughs> <laughs> See? This is... Like a teddy bear. <laughs> Okay, yeah. And it's not about who is better, it's just about who's stronger. Strength isn't everything. No, but when you're carrying... When you're carrying dead people, <laughs> hurt yes. injured party members... You can do things without being strong and move them. You just have to sure. be smart about doing it. Then you don't need a spider. Yeah, but that just makes it easier and it's a smart decision. But the hard work is good for you. It's still hard work. You have to hard work to train the spider to do it. That seems like... And not bite you! You know, if... When we're done with this this whole thing here, and you want to take a couple of months to go off on your own and tame some spiders... I will! Go ahead. But we got a job to do. Okay? Save the hunters, get them back to Feyen. Maybe have a stop in Windvale. But that's it. I'm just going to go. <laughs> okay. Um, so, I'm assuming you're trying to yeah. track the harpies or something. Well, or follow trying to find, find something, yeah. Like I mean, pathways. we're just basically headed that way. And <laughs> maybe <laughs> send, like... I'll probably send Spreewell oh, yeah. <laughs> and have him look around about the tree line okay. and see if he sees anything, too. Okay. Because being on the ground, we're not going to be able to see much. Kay. So, um, Give me... Three survival, or give me, give me five survival checks. Yep, you can have. She actually gets advantage anyway though, because she's tracking and hunting for the harpy. Oh, I'll do it hunting. on my own. Yeah, you can I'll do it. Check. Well, five of them. Oh, three. So, uh, let's do two. So mm-hmm. one. Oh, that one's not good. Uh, we have a fifteen. Hang on a minute. I gotta write these down. So let me think. I'll write mine down. Okay. 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 So Una has fifteen. A twenty-one. Okay. Another 21. Ooh, a 23. And 
a 20. Okay. <laughs> 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 uh, 9, a 21, an 8, a 7, and a 6. 9, wow. 8, 7, 6, okay. 21. And like, Una's like, <laughs> well, it's kind of intermittent because you're you're having Sprayle fly up and then occasionally you're um, kind of relying on the others to help move you so you can kind of look through his eyes. Yeah. But this method is very effective. You not only find the, like, the best path towards these mountains and start scaling them, you're making very good time and you're avoiding a lot of trouble. So right now it is like late afternoon and you guys have actually made it towards the um the mountain face you're welcome and um <laughs> both nora and una give me nature checks and this is with advantage for you because it's it's to remember information we'll do big for and her? Yeah. baby for you it's just another kind of nature check with your proficiency if you have it <laughs> I love for that. well <laughs> Oh, we're good, we're good, we're good. Big die, little roll. Nature is a 17. Okay. Eight. Okay. <laughs> um, you know, you're really trying to think about harpies and stuff, but then you keep spotting some plants, and then your mind starts wandering, and they're like, oh, these are really cool for a potion. And... Oh, pretty flowers. Yeah, like, can I pick those? <laughs> yeah, if you want, yeah. Sweet. What are they? You can get, um... You can get ingredients to... for the base of one healing potion that you can start spending time, um... Um, but you still have to get a couple other more expensive ingredients back in Fan, but yeah, or in a big city. Megan, because you rolled really well, you're thinking about it, and you're thinking, there's something about, like, the, the daylight and the sunshine, and you're like, this is nice. And you start really thinking about the stories of harpies that you've heard, and then you remember they, all the stories you've heard, they've happened at night. And you're thinking about it, you're like, hmm, I think the harpies hunt at night. So, they Blah. sleep during the day. <laughs> so, should we do something that attracts their attention? They sleep during the day, you they said? They sleep during the day. So, we could go try to find them on Ambush. a random hunt. Like, try to look for them up in the mountains. Or we can wait and set a trap down here and try to lure them down here. Those would be the two options. Right. We can either try to find them... Hopefully. Yeah. It's like early afternoon. You've probably, because it's summer, you've got like six hours of sunlight left. So we could spend three hours trying to look in the mountains to see if we can find them, which would be very difficult because they can travel miles. Or we can just spend the time to set up a trap, get a little rest, and then do it that way. I think if we just look for them, and then if we don't find them, we set a fire in the camp. Yeah. That's kind of bait enough, wouldn't it? I mean, it's probably both. easier to bait we, in yeah, the woods, sometimes. so... Yeah. Mm, I found it easier to bait on the rocks. <laughs> what? <laughs> <laughs> she said it's easier to bait in the forest. <laughs> I always found it easier to bait in the rocks. Well, isn't the forest where they hunt and everything? Exactly. But they calm down and if they see something easier to eat yeah. before they get to the forest. Yeah, but then, I mean, it's up to you guys. And there's this one time... I was going to Arby's and I wanted <laughs> some roast beef. And then I saw Hardy's and I was like, wait, they got good roast beef too. Uh, it's closer. What is Arby's? It's in that village. It's a lot of <laughs> oh. this guy's Do you know it is Carl's Jr.? <laughs> uh, oh, oh, Carl from the corner. <laughs> oh, hi, Carl. <laughs> um, do you think we would be easier spotted up in the mountains? Oh, yeah. So how, Especially how extreme yeah. are these cliff faces? Yeah, are they like extreme. 30 vertical, 45 degree? Are they extremely difficult? It to? looks like there are path, there degrees. are pathways. Like it's not like just solid straight rocks up. Like you mm -hmm. could try, you could feasibly find a path if you roll for some good survival checks. Is this like Sunday Gulch? <laughs> Sunday Gulch? <laughs> Lizzie, my terrifying death walk. Uh, no. <laughs> You're not gonna find a cabin with a broken down car. Oh, Damn. Damn. Well, I mean, we kind of—I mean, that's like the Harpy Cavern. It's basically <laughs> a cavern. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Maybe it'll have some like you know dead bodies around, which is yeah. kind of like the broken some down old cars. carriages. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, they've carried some off some horse carcasses. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, exactly. There you go. Yeah, if we want to no, try to like, go up them, then Sunday that's gold. fine. Mm -hmm. It's great. Mm -hmm. We so, can definitely try. I mean, my thought is that. 
If we can find them where they live. While they're sleeping? Well, even if they're not sleeping, we can make sure to get all of them. Right. Whereas if two of them come out and there's actually ten in there. That's true. We'd have to, you know, kill one, injure the other, let it get away, <laughs> and then follow it back. I agree. Because they'll probably have the bodies of the people up in their caves, too. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, up the mountain we go! Okay! So, probably spend spree. We'll just got ahead All right. and then to find the best path for us since there's so many of Give us as me... well. Give me... Five more survival checks, and you can have like advantage. Just, and uh, then, if anyone else wants Miguel to do survival, go sure, go ahead. Road to El Dorado. <laughs> Both is good. Both. Both. Mm-hmm. Both is okay. Yeah. Two. Twenty-one. Okay. Hey, good roll. <laughs> Ooh, a nineteen and a one. Um, so that is a twenty-three. Oh, two tens. That's a fourteen. Someone want to keep the eyes out for anything while sure. we're traveling. And another 23. I'll try what to be the, observed. Yeah. 21, 23, 14. Nora will keep an eye out for stuff. Do I have one more? Yeah, I think I said five. Oh, and a 16. Okay. While they're Do doing the mind? tracking. Yeah. Um, Do you want, you want mine? Yeah, what are yours? <laughs> five. <laughs> Don't worry, it's all better this time. 22, okay. 15, 21, 8. Um, and while they're tracking, Nora and I are mm-hmm. keeping an eye out, Kay. like just observing the area. Give me know. perception checks. How uh, many? Um, give me three. Three? Okay, I rolled one. Yeah, My first one was 18. For... Oh. <laughs> um, or 16. 23. Okay. <clears throat> 11. Okay. Uh... Uh, 8, which I believe defaults to my passive of 14, 18, and 18. Okay. Um, you guys managed to... Oh, see. that last one would have defaulted to my passive too. Okay. 15. All right. Um, you guys are doing a pretty good job keeping a lookout. You can see as you're traveling that there are more of those uh, breaks in the trees um, where it looks like the something like dove through down. And then you'll you'll see a lot more of the shredded animal carcasses and everything like that. Are there more harpy feathers laying around? Yeah, there's a couple more harpy feathers laying around. Oh, I just gather. A Same. Of yeah. <laughs> In the bag holding. Yeah. Make a well, I want mine back, you fuckers. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just gonna any harpy feathers I find. I'm just gonna okay. try to pick up and shove in the bag holding. Yep. Okay. How many can we get? You get. You get nine more harpy feathers. Wow. You can That's make a whole nice. wing. Dude, we could totally make a harpy cloak. Mm-hmm. <laughs> right? Uh, just need some harpy leather. Yes, but with Una and Hans and Franz's survival rolls, you guys managed to find a pretty safe way up the mountain. It's not too difficult other than just... There's a couple points where it's a little bit steeper and you have to kind of help each other get up some of the higher steps. But since like there's so many of you who are strong and tall, it's not impossible to do so. Um, and you manage to make it about like a f- three miles up s- this uh, mountain. And it's about an hour before sunset. Um, and you can see now that there's starting to be a lot more of these openings and caves now how are you guys proceeding what's your plan so what angle are we at on the mountain roughly now like could i possibly conjure my floating disc and have it be next to me without falling that yeah there's some some areas are more narrow but by and large you're finding pathways that are mountain, the whole mountain doesn't just go up like this yeah yeah and you've got yeah there's yeah, like some places tiers. where it's flatter and then you're like you had to walk for my like... question is have we come across spots where if i were to summit my disc there would be a 20 foot or is it hold on a 10 foot elevation difference where my disc would just go away well, I mean, we would probably run into that, but we'd ha- we yeah. could go, like, we yeah, ourselves would, would have it, to yeah. go around oh, that. Yeah. Oh, yeah, you would go around it. Yeah, you probably would have had to resummon it once or twice okay. if you wanted it up constantly. Okay. 
Because I don't think I want it up constantly. I'm just no. thinking when we get up there, it no. might be nice to have. It's kind of... If it would be, like, if we find an area that's safe to have it, it wouldn't be a bad thing if this is unsafe ground to have someone stand on it. Mm. You get what yeah. I'm saying? Sure. Maybe. Sure. Yeah, there's... Where you're at right now, because you've gone more upwards and into the mountain, it's leveled off a bit, where there's much more wider pathways, about, like, ten feet across, at least, and there's okay. not those more severe drop-offs in spots. So, so. What, what were you asking us about how we're going about this? How are you going about this? Now that you guys are kind of approaching caves, and, like, there's more openings openings in the rocks, probably, an hour left the probably sending yeah, Spreewell in the caves first. I mean, he's just a bird flutter around or near. Mm -hmm. Um, Unless you I mean, want to sneak up there. No, I, well, I, I'm, like, I don't know how harpies live. Would they, like, hang out in front of their cave during, while no. they're awake, and then go hunting? Would they, be, would, like, would be able to find, like, scratches in the rock where they're taking off out in front of their cave? Uh, would we be able to smell what them? What do I know about harpies' home lives? <laughs> Give me another nature check with advantage. Is when I'm having coffee and <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's caving. Most like brunches, brunches, and I, brunches, and I, is the most recent issue is a sixteen. Of harpy okay. house life. Um, you know that harpies are not very intelligent creatures. <laughs> um, you know that they tend to be much more instinctual and they are skittish. They don't like attacking something if it looks like there's not a clear advantage. They're much more likely to strike and then run away if it looks like they're not going to win the fight. Okay. Um, so you would assume from that that they would probably be much more like in one of the caves trying to be protected and okay. unseen while they rest so that way if there's any predators like they're not but they're not smart enough to like have traps or like yeah. you know but they, they're gonna be inside the cave they're probably gonna be resting inside a cave La. Hmm? yeah that i was wondering something else but okay oh well, well i asked like i mean would we be, be able to find uh -huh. like marks signs. where they're coming out of their cave and you would have off? You'd signs know, of yeah, you would know that would like they really yeah. smell them coming like in the yeah, cave yeah they don't smell great they don't bathe and stuff so yeah you could you there would be signs of life Harpies. of them like defecating and like you know like not yeah. showering pitching poop harpy poop is everywhere <laughs> Like, they are birds. Discarded bones. <laughs> yeah, discarded bones, scratches. Yes. Right. So like they're. That's kind of yeah. what we're looking for. Maybe yeah. kind of yeah. send so you into them. Yeah. I don't know if we need to send her into them. I mean, well, like up to look at them, yeah, yeah, not like yeah. into the cave, but like okay. look at the entrance of this one, like the entrance of that one. Yeah. Yeah. I guess, yeah, I'd probably, I mean, move with Spreewell, and then, and then just kind of have him just look, look around the, the cave. Do you know, so Hobby's on the night's thing, obviously see in the dark, right? Yes. Yes. <laughs> but, so you made the comment that they like have the advantage. What if we put, like, myself out there on the fire while you guys hide in the nearby cave? And when it comes down to attack me, let's bring out ambush. Yeah, we could. I was thinking Let's do this first. Have Nora no. be like a little bunny. No. 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 Okay. I thought I'd get eated. <laughs> It'd be fine. We'd be right Goodness there. Goodness gracious. No. I think that's a little too risky. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> now you see. I mean. Me and I mean, my brother would be perfect targets for the, for their attack because, well. Well, you no. guys are pretty big and bulky. I'd be There's a better one target. Of us. If I go up on my saddle. Oh, sure. Okay. I mean, maybe, yeah, but, the, but I... If you, if you saw me sitting alone by a fire with the rest of you, would you be like, oh, we could take that dude? Probably no. not. Nope. <laughs> well, you know me, though, brother. No. <laughs> I'm just saying, right? Four people around the fire is way more scary than one person. No, but one person around the fire is what he's saying if it was just him solo. But you look like you could put up a fight, though. That's, that's the thing. Like, I look a little less intimidating. Than you. I mean, if you want to be bite. I mean, that would probably make the more sense. I look more delicate than you, and probably more fragile, to be honest. Una, what if you describe, uh, uh, disguise a lot more yourself, juicy flesh, yeah. as a kenku? That's what I was thinking about doing. I mean, and you can certainly give that a shot. 
I mean, because if you guys are right there, you guys can come out and hit them right away where, I mean, I can easily get back and away. I mean, I don't know about you, but I've never really been that good at hiding. Yeah, I'll, I'll be a kinku, though. I can though. actually help with that. Can you? Mm-hmm. Oh, okay. Sure, yeah. So, you can, you know... I mean, I'm more dainty, and I can change myself to look, like, even more dainty and less <laughs> aggressive. And a kinku's a great idea. Oh, like the... Considering that... Yeah, okay. Like, well... Anyway. Yeah. Consider, now with bigger boobs. <laughs> con- con- <laughs> consider that these hoppies killed a mama bear and her cubs. I don't think they're going to be scared of one of us. You two are That's pretty fine. I, I'm okay with being bait. It's fine. It won't be the first and it won't be the last time. The harpies killed the mama bear and her cubs. If worse comes to Shredded worse, them. I'll, I'll run away. I'll <coughs> be fine. I promise. Do you know how fast a bear can run? Yes. <laughs> Much faster than you. But that's okay. I, I have okay. my ways. It'll be fine. Okay. Yeah. So you're going to s- wait for the sun to set. And well, we're going well, to okay. we're gonna That's what we were looking now. Yeah. Okay. All right. And, and as we're so doing yeah, this. And what, so we're going to keep okay. sending Spruel to look at the caves, and then we'll okay. try to find a cave right. for us, so that way like I could be a Kenku sitting on the edge of the cave, and they'd be back in okay. the cave. Um, have Spree- How far ahead are you sending Spreel? She knows what she wants. Yeah, I was well, just her curious. command yeah. range is like 100 feet or yeah, something. Yeah, I think so. That's feet. what I'm trying to yeah, find it's here. Not... Yeah. But you can be like, hey, go up to that cave and come back. Uh, right. with, yeah. So, okay. I mean, 100 feet, have them look at the cave, come back, then we okay. would kind of move up and then, and then the next cave and okay. so on and so forth. Have Spreel give me a perception check. Mm. Let's go, Spreel. You got this. You got this. Oh. You can't grab it. <laughs> I don't think Spreel does. Perception. Blind is a puffin. Okay, our perception's the same, so it's a nine. Um, Spruel is... Passive is 14. Do animals have yeah. pa- Okay, then yeah. Sense passive um, perception. Yeah. All right. Every, everything yeah. has a passive perception. So yeah, perception. Um, Spruel at first is a little distracted and flies by a couple of them and just doesn't really notice anything right away. And then um, you guys kind of keep moving forward and then... Eventually, like, one of the caves about still, like, just 90 feet ahead of you, um, he sees it looks like, um, like, chips in the rocks and talon marks, and then he sees, like, it looks like bones. And he starts circling around, like, fluttering kind of in a circle, and then he can see, like, blood splatter, like, dragging something into the cave. I think we found him. I think Spreel found him. Do we want to go and sneak up on them? Is that the goal here? Well, we have one or two options. We can either have me be bait. But we know where they are. They're in the cave. Or, yeah. We can't fly away then. That's true. Exactly. Would we like... Do we have any nets? No. No. I don't think Luna so. Luna might for her fishing kit stuff she has. I might have. I don't know how big of a net that would be. I think it, how it big would is not the cave be strong mouth? enough for... Um, the cave mouth is... Yeah, it probably wouldn't be strong uh, enough. It wouldn't be strong enough to hold the harp 30? By, yeah, 30 feet. It's like a couple of fish. And 20 right, feet right, right. wide. Okay. I mean, it looks like it go, It fades into blackness from Spreewell's. Do we have any rope, brother? Oh, well, yeah. Well, we have rope, too. Or I have rope. Yeah, yeah. everybody has rope. Because if we can... Put the rope across the opening. If they try to fly out, maybe the rope catches them. How big are harpies? They're human sized. Does that mean we can just go across it like twice? Like, and vertical and horizontal. Crisscross. Apples. <laughs> I was gonna say apple slice. Um so what I'm getting at is okay, so you got this 30 foot opening. Cave opening. And yep. if you go like up five feet and across and then go up like another five feet and go across mm-hmm. they're not able to get through with their wings out yeah but they could glide through yeah you really need to get up to speed before you're gliding though. yeah i don't know how long that cave is could be like the bat cave they just yeah straight out <laughs> bat cave. i mean yeah we could whatever that's just a funny vision in my he's head he's got a drag so strip there, before the waterfall yep. jump there's there's the the thing of how are we going to do this this is a mountain we have to use um, our climbing gear. 
Then let's make a bunch of noise. Well, I can use my disc. What, for what? To get us up there? Is that what we're talking no, about? No, we're to tie the oh. rope to something. Yeah, to, to anchor the rope outside oh. the cave now. Because oh. if we're sitting there going, ting, ting, it's yeah, going to echo not, down the that's cave. Not, that's, which, yeah. is, which is a good thought. Yeah. Um, unless, unless we can... There may be a, like a, a rock face you could tie it to? Right, that's what I was thinking. You know, yeah, so wrap what, it around does, a rock. What does Bruel see? Does, does he I, see a place he's where we still outside the mouth of the cave? Yeah, um, so would he see anything like where we could tie our ropes around? Like, ropes to? Um, I, there's some loose boulders, but there's not that many of them where mm-hmm. it would stretch all the way across the mouth of the cave. Otherwise, the mouth of the cave itself is pretty smooth. Yes. What about if, so there's bones around the cave mouth, yeah? Mm-hmm. So if, if there's boulders on above the cave, we can tie the ropes to those boulders and dangle them over the cave mouth and tie some of the bones around the other end so if the harpies just fly through the ropes are gonna like go uh, along their wings or whatever and then when they get to the end they'll get cut and slapped by the bones so what you're trying to do is i mean we've only got a little bit of time bro. <laughs> you guys yeah. got like 40 minutes before this like before sunset I say I, that if they're sleeping, we just go in there and start killing them. Okay, fine. <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying to pull another war I'll hammer. Take, Dude, I was going to say, I'm like, this no, is I really, some I wish we were down here earlier, because, yeah, I would totally, Oh, my like, God. I'm like, this is some I can, shit. I'll watch yeah. them out to the cave and pick them up right. as they fly out. That would be good. Sure. Do you want to do as well, Nora? Would you take care of um, the girl? You got the range. Dude. It depends, it depends on how deep the... Cave is. The cave is, because if I'm helping you guys get through... No, I know. ...without being heard... She needs to, to be with you. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, once, anyway. yeah, depending on how far, but I'll be the back end to block. Well, and I'll go with you guys. I think I'll be able to help out a little bit. Isis. Mm-hmm. Rowling, did you want to stay out here or do you want to come with us? I feel like I should maybe go in. I think we're all going in. Yeah. At this point. Does anyone have trouble climbing? Like, are we having, will we have issues getting up into that cave? No, it didn't okay. look like it from at least where Spreel was off from the outside. Right. With a plan in place, the party ventures into the dangerous Harpy Cave. It looks like a fight is ahead of them, but the outcome is definitely uncertain. Will they find the missing hunters or become dinner? Find out next time on the Guardians of Fahal.